Romain Crozet. Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is uh, Romain Crozet. I'm the director of the Climate Chance Association. Um, <clears throat> Climate Chance is a, an, an open platform which gathers uh, non-state actors committed to fight against climate change. And um, we, we, are, we have been created back in 2015, and it's been since then years that we are uh, working with all kinds of uh, networks of, of non-state actors to try to create an enabling environment for, uh, for climate action. Um, this year, uh, the beginning of the year in March, we organized the Climate Change Summit Europe, um, where we gathered uh, a few months after COP26, uh, the main um, networks of, of non-state actors um, in order to discuss about the implementation of the EU uh, Green Deal at the local level uh, across Europe. Uh, this webinar aims at uh, summarizing what happened and give a feedback on the main messages that uh, raised, uh, were raised during that event. Um, many of the all the speakers who are around the table were participating to, the, to that event and uh, I thank them for that. So yeah, despite the, the challenging uh, context we had in, in March 2022, we successfully held uh, this, um, this uh, non-state actors uh, climate event uh, presentially uh, in, in Nantes, in France. We gathered uh, almost 1,000 participants on site uh, to work together on drafting concrete proposals on the implementation of the EU Green Deal at the local level. Uh, we were covering um, many, many sectors, strategic sectors, uh, essential to the green transition uh, in Europe, uh, with experts coming from uh, organizations of the civil society, of local governments, many mayors, uh, businesses, NGOs, women's organizations, uh, etc. Um, <clears throat> so um, we, we worked during uh, two, uh, two days um, with uh, to, to draft recommendations to accelerate the implement, implementation of the EU Green Deal at the local level. Um, and then this particular webinar of today, uh, as a partner event of the EU Green Week, uh, will try to uh, summarize the, the proposals which emerged from the many workshops we organized during the event, uh, followed by uh, many weeks of collaboration among uh, networks of non-state actors, uh, uh, including networks such as the European Committee of the Regions, Climate Alliance, CMR, ICLEI, or Energy Cities, and many sectorial experts from the community of European non-state actors. So uh, this webinar will highlight the consultation process which facilitated the elaborations of those proposals, uh, which will be published soon. Uh, we are still finalizing them. Um, and as part of the dissemination plan of, this, uh, uh, of these proposals, this event of today is being key to help us to reach uh, our long-term goal of spreading the proposals through the EU com community and the decision makers also from the European institutions and European states. The speakers uh, around the table today um, are uh, Ronan Dantec, who is the president of Climate Change Association, a senator, senator from uh, Loire Atlantique in France. We are also pleased to have uh, Rafał Swarczkowski, uh, mayor of Warsaw, um, in Poland, a member of the European Committee of the Regions, a uh, member of the Covenant of Mayors Political Board, and uh, COR Rapporteur on the European Climate Pact on the Energy Efficiency Directive. Uh, we also have uh, Frédéric Boyer, who is a project manager of the Covenant of Mayors at Energy Cities. Uh, we have Thomas Bros. Uh, Director of Climate Alliance, uh, Anne Bach, a Gender and Climate Policy Coordinator of Women Engaged for a Common Future, Françoise Bonnet, Secretary General of ACR Plus, 
uh, and Martin Porter, Senior Strategic Advisor at CLG Europe and Executive Chair of CISL Brussels. Thank you to, uh, and also we have, I don't see him connected maybe, but Bernard Soulage, ah, yes, he's here. Bernard Soulage, who's Secretary General of uh, Climate Change Association, who, who will be uh, following all the, the conversation and debates and will be doing a conclusion to the, the, this webinar. So um, without further introduction, uh, thank you all for being here. Uh, thank you to the speakers. Thank you to the participants who are following us. Um, and I will now give the floor to Ronan Dantec, who will give an overview of um, the Climate Change Summit Europe and the proposals we had uh, in, uh, I mean, the process we, we set to draft those proposals and to give us the, the overview of the main trends that emerged from uh, the event. Thank you, Ronan. Uh, thank you, Romain. You, you heard me very well. It's okay? Yes, perfectly. Thank, thank you. And uh, uh, I'm very happy to have this exchange. Um, uh, the, the Climate uh, uh, Change Summit, uh, the first European Climate Change Summit, it was very important uh, to organize him during the uh, pre French presidency of European Union. It was an opportunity, it was our responsibility. And it was uh, uh, maybe the first time that uh, we, we tried to, to organize a, a debate, a, a more precise debate uh, about what we, we wait, what we can propose to European Union uh, to enforce uh, climate uh, action. It was, uh, the focus was really uh, the action of uh, European Union and, of course, uh, the role of non-state actors, the role of territories uh, in this uh, transition. Um, of course, uh, the, this summit uh, was organized in a very specific period because, as you know, a few days before the uh, climate change, mm. uh, we, uh, we had uh, this war, this Russian aggression in Ukraine. We decide with uh, the network, we have a, uh, an emergency meeting to, to, uh, to continue to organize the, the meeting. But of course, this meeting was an opportunity and, uh, and uh, uh, with uh, the mayor of, uh, of Varso who was present by Visio, we have delivered some very strong message about our solidarity uh, with Ukraine people, our solidarity of elected people of uh, Ukraine. It was very important to to show this mobilization, this solidarity, this unanimity of European non-state actors, of European uh, elected people uh, for uh, Ukrainian uh, people. And uh, I know as uh, is, so, uh, I, uh, I want to underline the, the mobilization of uh, Poland city and first, of course, of uh, Warsaw to, to host uh, uh, refugees of, uh, of Ukraine. We, we, we are in this very, very specific uh, moment. So, but uh, it was uh, maybe one of the most important message of this uh, summit. Uh, we know now in this context, this is European and international context, that it's important to, to enforce, to accelerate for, for the transition because it, it's clear that uh, uh, energy autonomy of Europe in this moment is a key point. Uh, uh, to participate, to, to find a, a solution, find a, a solution for peace uh, in the uh, east of, uh, of Europe. There is a strong link now, and I think for the uh, next few years, for maybe a long time, a strong link between our action for climate and our action for, for peace. It is the same solutions. It is the same solutions. So uh, I have not, uh, of course, the time to, to detail of the, the proposal of, uh, of the meeting in Nantes. The meeting was very important, uh, around uh, 30 uh, roundtables, 30 meetings, uh, 200 speakers, uh, very, very uh, good uh, debate and a lot of proposal. For this proposal, you have the website uh, climatechange.org uh, with uh, all, all the proposal of uh, each uh, of each meeting, but uh, for these few uh, minutes, I can focus maybe just for two or three points. First point, 
uh, we, we have uh, a, a new report of European Court of Auditors. This report say very clearly that the, the last budget of European Union, this last budget, the part for climate action was less than the, than the, 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 the presentation uh, of, the, uh, of the action of European Union. In the official presentation, it's 20% of the last budget of the European Union who was mobilized for climate action. In reality, in the report of the European Court of Auditors, it is just 13%. The difference is around 70 billion euros. It's a lot. And maybe one of the key messages of the meeting in North uh, with an important uh, round table, it is this question of access to finance for the territories, for local governments uh, to uh, uh, support uh, the climate and energy uh, transition. We discuss, uh, for example, uh, about uh, loan, uh, a new mechanism uh, for the transition, we know that uh, we have a, a lot of action to uh, to develop. If I take just the example of the city or not of uh, my city, we need just for the retrofit of public building around one billion euro in the next year. One billion euro just for the six hundred thousand inhabitants of the city of Nantes, and just for public buildings. It's a lot of money, and we have no access at this moment to this uh, to this money uh, because the proposal of the different bank and the European Investment Bank well, uh, was presented in note. Uh, it's uh, too short. Uh, we need uh, for the return of investment around 30, uh, 40 uh, years, and the proposal is around uh, 13 or 15. Uh, of 15 years uh, uh, for, for this uh, kind of loan. We know, of course, uh, interest rate uh, 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 around zero, it is not the case. And uh, we have to continue to discuss with the European Union about this capacity to have access to finance. Not subsidy, maybe just loan, because there, there is a, a return of investment, but in a very long, long term, and we have to discuss uh, this kind of mechanism. It was uh, a very important point of our discussion in Nantes, and we have to, to continue uh, to discuss uh, this point. Uh, other point, it's, uh, and you can uh, uh, see this proposal on our website, um, we, we have to continue uh, to uh, support uh, energy company and maybe small energy company or local community for the transition. We know that a, a, part, a, la, a part of the solution is uh, renewable uh, energy. For this, we need new uh, mechanism, mechanism uh, the stability of the market, the stability of the price uh, for, uh, uh, for the renewable uh, energy. It's very important to continue to discuss uh, with the commission about the global mechanism the electricity market to uh, stabilize uh, the price and permit to this company to continue to invest uh, with some security. It's a key point and we have delivered some uh, very concrete proposal, very technical proposal about uh, 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 this point. I have no time to continue to, uh, to develop uh, other points, but of course, and I'm sure that uh, uh, Thomas is, is, is agree, and it's a very important point in the story of uh, climate change and uh, how strong uh, uh, participation with uh, with other uh, uh, networks and co collaboration. It's that uh, it's very important, and uh, I know that the European Committee of Region uh, defends this point too. Uh, it's very important that European Commission. Uh, uh, understand very well that the mobilization of territory, the mobilization of city, as uh, the city of Varsovia, um, is key if we want to uh, reach the, the targets. Because a large part of uh, uh, climate uh, CO2 emission has in link with daily life. And the capacity to change daily life, it is a decision of local elected people and of uh, all the inhabitants. 
uh, we, we have to discuss more with the commission about all these proposals. And maybe uh, one of the, the interests of the European uh, climate change, Nord was the first, we have organized other international uh, meeting, but it was the, the first uh, specific meeting, European meeting. I think that it's important to create a place uh, where we have this real discussion with the European Commission about the implementation of uh, uh, the cl European climate strategy. Maybe it, this was of the most important message of this uh, first uh, uh, meeting uh, in North with, of course, the solidarity with, uh, with Ukraine. But we have to continue uh, to discuss with the European Commission. And I hope that uh, we have the, the capacity to organize next year another meeting uh, with maybe more discussion uh, with, before with the European Commission because we have to discuss together. So uh, well, it was uh, this uh, global presentation of the meeting in Nantes and thank you for all the networks who participate, who support the meeting uh, to all the, the 200 uh, speaker and to the team of climate change because we organized this meeting with the situation of COVID uh, in two months, it was very difficult to organize a big meeting in just two months. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Ronan, uh, for the, the big picture. And um, so now uh, moving to uh, the mayor of Warsaw, uh, Rafał Strapkowski. Um, we see how the local, the cities are key, key players and often in advance uh, compared to uh, state commitments, for example, from your perspective as the mayor of Warsaw, uh, what can be the role of uh, of a city, uh, such an important city, uh, in the EU Green Deal and the just transition, and maybe what has been the evolution since we last saw each other in Nantes a uh, few few months ago and uh, the current situation in Europe. Thank you, uh, Rafael. Uh, good morning, bonjour. Uh, premièrement, uh, félicitations pour une grande réussite uh, du sommet du Nantes. C'était vraiment magnifique. Uh, guys, I mean, as, as you all know, the, the challenges before us are absolutely unprecedented because just as we are getting out of the COVID crisis, and of course, uh, we have uh, a priority of dealing with uh, the Green Deal and, and a lot needs to be done, we have a war on our eastern border. And some people say that we should uh, now focus on <clears throat> geopolitical issues and, and, and focus on Ukraine. And, and of course that um, some of our priorities should be uh, treated uh, differently. But I'm of the opinion, and I would submit to you that we need to do everything at the same time, that we, uh, our, our ideas about uh, greening our cities and fighting climate change are becoming even more urgent. And that we should look for synergies and then try to deal with all of those problems simultaneously, which of course is very, very difficult. But uh, that's our ambition in, in the Committee of the Regions, that's our ambition um, uh, also in the European Union, because we can see that uh, the European Commission thinks along very similar lines. But of course, it is not going to be uh, easy uh, fighting climate change in such uh, difficult circumstances. But I think that the, the war in, 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 in Ukraine and the attack, uh, unprecedented attack of Russia, has proved that we need to take uh, take uh, uh, our green agenda even more seriously because we we simply need to make ourselves independent of fossil fuels uh, coming especially uh, from Russia. And you've seen a stop in delivery to to Poland, to Bulgaria, to Finland, which means that we need to do all of those things simultaneously. We need to make ourselves independent, and we need to be ambitious when it comes to um, a green uh, uh, agenda. The the biggest problem is that we need adequate resources in order to do it, you know, because we cannot do it without money. And at the margins, I can tell you that you know we are dealing with a refugee crisis. We've seen some money from the United States of America on the ground. We haven't seen any money from the European Union yet. Of course, I hope that this is going to change very quickly, but that's the reality on the ground. And that's why we cannot talk about ambitious, amb ambitions without talking about uh, adequate resources. The worst thing that could happen is that we are going to be very big on promises and that then we will have problems in delivering green uh, action. Now, of course, 
on uh, the 20th of, of April, the Committee of the Regions has adopted a resolution on the Repower EU, where we've talked about uh, intervening in electricity prices to actually tackle high volatility of prices and mitigate the impact on the most vulnerable citizens, because we cannot lose it from sight that we need to also think about energy exclusion. We need to think about prices because otherwise we're going to, to throw the baby uh, with the bathwater. Uh, and that's why uh, we are of the opinion that the European Commission should extend the application of the general escape clause uh, of the Stability and Growth Pact at least to the end of 2023, because otherwise it will be very, very important for us all to deal with the, the crisis at hand. And of course, as we were dealing with Repower uh, EU, uh, suddenly uh, we had a Repower 2 package, which of course brought additional measures where the strong focus on local and regional government is uh, the focal point of it. And it needs to be said, guys. I mean, Repower EU, especially the second package, uh, brings an incredible responsibility to the regional uh, and local authorities, and especially to the cities. So, in a certain sense, you know, we are the first front, and we we are fighting the, the, the pandemic, that's us, mostly the cities. We are fighting uh, here in this part of Europe, the refugee crisis. And again, it's us, the cities. And then the focus is, of course, on greening um, uh, the European Union. And yet again, uh, quite a lot is to be done in the cities. That's why uh, the issue of uh, adequate financing is so important. Uh, I welcome the idea of reducing red tape and facilitating the access to grids. That's a good idea, but again, it will need an incredible mobilization of resources and our attention, and then we're ready to do it, but we need to talk about it openly. Now, the Save Energy Communication campaign that the Convenant of Mayors and European Commission and the Committee of the Regions have launched last week, Cities Energy Savings Sprint, is an absolutely key action within a Repower EU framework. Now, we've talked as representatives of the Committee of the Regions and, and, and of course, Convenants of Mayors with uh, quite a lot of stakeholders, of course, Vice President Timmermans um, included, and it was a very good conversation. We've talked to Commissioner Simpson and uh, Charles Michel Scabinet. I had a privilege to talk to uh, the President of the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen herself, and we've underlined our readiness to uh, be committed and to actually come up with our own actions which are going to mobilize the public opinion and show how much we can do in the cities in order to uh, to actually uh, show added value and save energy and uh, of course also show good practices which could be implemented i'm confident that that's what we can do and that emergency emergency saving measures set in the city's energy saving sprint will, will actually help uh, local governments reduce municipal energy consumption and encourage the support of citizens and local business to take similar measures. And that's what we are doing in Warsaw. I was just uh, heading um, uh, heading uh, our meeting of, of my deputies where we were uh, deciding uh, to uh, actually change um, uh, uh, our uh, our electricity and lamp systems on the streets into uh, into LEDs, which are going to save energy. Of course, we've taken two months ago uh, a decision to have solar panels on all the public utilities buildings in Warsaw uh, two months before the Commission actually came up with a similar idea in Repower U. So we are in absolute sync with uh, what the Commission proposes, but we have quite uh, a few ideas how to you know, do it in a way which is going to be more demonstrative. That's why uh, our idea, the Sprint uh, idea, uh, Cities Energy Savings Sprint, where we list a number of measures you know, days without cars, days in which you work at home, and of course, very explicit measures where cities can you know, do a lot in order to save energy. And by the way, I'm also the rapporteur of the Committee of the Regions on the uh, uh, revamped uh, energy efficiency uh, directive, uh, so that we can uh, show to the citizens that we take it very seriously. And I think that if you read the Sprint Initiative, and if you look at all the proposals that are there, I think that there is quite a lot that we can do together in order to push the agenda uh, um, further. And of course, I also represent one of the uh, 100 climate neutral cities mission, which is very important for us, or I even would say fundamental, because this idea opens up a possibility for direct financing for the cities coming from the European Commission. The only problem is that it opens the door, but the money is not yet there. So again, we need to push forward so that money is 
uh, provided. And of course, on top of being relevant for addressing the current energy crisis with a view to facing possible shortages uh, already in summer, uh, that allows us to uh, switch from a several uh, from the sectoral approach that, of course, characterizes what we have been doing so far to energy policy, which is based on energy sufficiency approach. And I think that we've got quite a lot to demonstrate how to uh, do it. Uh, in the Committee of the Regions, we are fully committed to support the action, getting on board our members, but also uh, getting in, in touch uh, and creating synergies with networks such uh, as yours, but also young elected uh, politicians, uh, of course, also ambassadors of the continent of, of, of mayors, uh, and we are ready to uh, mobilize uh, us all. To conclude, the EU's response uh, to what is happening uh, in the East, but also to the energy crisis and to the global warming needs to be immediate, united and coordinated. We should be looking for synergies to do all of that. And of course, energy saving is in a sense the least controversial, but not uh, that easy. And we should take immediate action on that uh, because the energy which we are going to save uh, will refill the storage tanks and it will allow us allow us to be better prepared for what uh, is uh, to come. Uh, this is the greatest act of, of solidarity, which should be shown immediately for vulnerable households. And that's exactly what we need, because we are not going to carry the day without the support of the most vulnerable. We do have a responsibility as mayors um, uh, for our citizens and companies. And of course, the steps we'll be taking in the next couple of months uh, to determine uh, the future of our cities. And I'm, of course, of course uh, convinced that today's discussions are very valuable in order to garner support of all these stakeholders in order to carry the day. But at the end, uh, it all comes to the level of ambition. And the level of ambition of ours is great. We are ready to, uh, to persevere and go further and be ambitious. But yet again, we need the adequate resources. And I have to tell you, with the difficult government that we have here in Poland, which wants to cut the big cities out of financing, uh, it is crucial that we put pressure so that if the money uh, is going our way, that it is being spent according to transparent and non-political criteria. And as you know, the president of the European Commission uh, is, is coming to Poland uh, today, uh, and there will be a movement on the recovery uh, package, uh, which was blocked so far. That's fantastic because we all need the money. Uh, there are milestones in it, of course, mostly connected to uh, the rule of law, but not only. And the important thing is that we all create a certain pressure and talk to the European Commission officials, that they make sure that the money is spent wisely and that it takes into consideration the needs of the regional and local governments. Because otherwise, you know, much of our ambition will simply stay on paper and we cannot afford that. That's why we need to make sure that the resources are there. Because at the end of the day, uh, if, if Poland does not fulfill uh, these um, priorities, it will be very difficult for Europe to fulfill, to fulfill our goals. We here in the cities are ready for that, and we will fight for our ambitious uh, agenda together with you. So yet again, thank you very much for having me. Uh, merci beaucoup pour organiser les sommets uh, à Nantes. Uh, nous sommes tous prêts à, à coopérer à, ensemble pour uh, uh, pour se battre pour des priorités qui sont le plus important pour nous pour 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 pour, pour, pour nous uh, donc merci beaucoup et à la prochaine merci monsieur le maire et, as you speak very well French uh, peut-être uh, avons-nous à discuter ensemble de monter justement un climate change uh, en, en Europe centrale vers chez vous avec un lien avec l'Ukraine nous en avons à en discuter ensemble tout à Merci beaucoup. À la prochaine. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor, for your very valuable inputs. Um, lots of uh, valuable information in uh, what you've uh, you've said. But uh, yeah, sh the showing the leadership of the of the cities, and also the importance of the the networks and these open platforms for more collaboration. Um, which uh, which opens to the next uh, topic also and the next speaker who will also strengthen these aspects of uh, the mobilizations of citizens and also how to push the money to the cities concretely 
which is a, a key point that the mayor mentioned. So uh, Frédéric Boyer uh, from Energy Cities, uh, during our summit, we were lucky to have many heads of leaders uh, of the energy transition, uh, such as Energy Cities, and um, which is an orga organization which already is leading the way for cities and local actors. Um, you co-organized co some of the workshops of our summit um, uh, and uh, specifically the ones also on the citizens' participation through citizen assemblies. So we would like to know what are the messages which came out and what is your experience on, on this aspect, but also on the needs of, of on how to push the money to the cities, as the mayor mentioned, and uh, the engineering, let's say, needs of the, the, the local authorities. I think you have also initiatives on that, on that side. So if you could, uh, in a few minutes, 10 minutes, uh, tell us about, about this. Thank you. Thank you very much, Romain, and, and good morning, everyone. Um, happy to be here again. Uh, it was nice to be in Nantes and, and meet some of you. Um, I have to excuse Claire Homé. She was in charge of the specific session on Citizens' Assembly while I was speaking in another one, uh, but I had a, a chance um, to, to quickly exchange with, with her about what happened. And, but also to insist on, on the, the importance of the engagement of citizens. I think it, it was also very clear in the, in the message of uh, Rafael Trasovsky. Uh, I mean, the mayors are better placed to engage the local community into the transition, um, and, and that's why we need to reinforce the, the capacities. But why, why do we need to engage? I'm, I guess I'm talking to people that are convinced about that. But um, first of all, um, because it's, it's also thanks to the citizens that, that there is such a, a wake-up call of, uh, of local politicians and also, also national politicians on, on climate. I mean, the, the, the Greta Thunberg movement, the Fridays movement and everything have really um, put climate, cha climate change uh, as, a, as a huge priority and the urgency to act um, as a priority in many uh, cities. Um, and and that, that's the first good element. The second one, why do we need to engage the citizens? Is when you look at what local authorities can do, if we talk about the public services, um, and actually Ronan mentioned that with the amount of money needed to, um, to invest in the public buildings in Nantes, um, the, the amount of, of greenhouse gas emissions coming from the, let's say, the public sector, from, from public buildings and from the public transport, would account for three to five percent of a territory only. The rest is us as citizens, as small, as SMEs and so on, that are producing the biggest amount of, uh, of emissions. So if we are not taking part into the transition, we will never reach the high ambition that many politicians and, and many citizens want everyone to have. And finally, I mean, and that was, again, that, that, that was already the case when we met in Nantes, um, the current crisis has definitely exacerbated the need to get the citizens on board, starting with the most vulnerable one, and the number of them is really growing, considering the price of energy we are having in most of the countries, but also to get the other ones, the, uh, the lucky ones, such as me, a bobo who can afford to put PV on his roof, but I can still do more in changing my behavior uh, for the transition, for the climate, but also in solidarity for Ukraine. And that's why I'm very, I'm very glad that, uh, that Mayor Trasovsky uh, promoted the sprint, uh, this initiative that we launched uh, as part of the Covenant of Mayors with the support of the Commission and the Committee of the Region. And I, I put the link into the, into the chat. Uh, this is mainly an initiative that we, we, we're inviting EU cities to join, but I saw there was a question. Everyone is uh, welcome. Every local authorities in the world is welcome to join. Uh, of course, the, the, the element of the importance of EU cities to join is to quickly save energy here so that we cut the money flow going to Putin to finance his war against Ukraine. That's one of the key elements. The second one is to prepare for the next winter, but also to start preparing um, 
for the summer because um, when I was presenting the campaign to the Committee of the Regions this week, uh, some elected members of, uh, of Cyprus or Greece were saying that they're going to have 50 degrees during the summer. So how can you ask tourists, how can you ask citizens not to switch on the air conditioning? So again, we have uh, this multiple crisis that we are facing and that needs local responses. And for that, uh, we need, as, as the mayor said it just before, we need to empower them. We need to give them the capacities to do it. So second element regarding the citizens' engagement, uh, this is something that is very, very clear now in, in many EU initiatives. Um, I could mention the European Climate Pact of the Vice President Timmermans. He's very keen on engaging everyone to take action for climate. That's, that's starting from the, this new initiative of the Commission that we decided to include into the Covenant of Mayor's political commitment. So what, what the Municipal Council would go through before allowing the Mayor to sign up to the Covenant, there's a point on committing to engage the community committing to engage the citizens, the SMEs, the academia, to organize a local climate pact, to organize a local COP. You can call it the way you want, but the key element is really to get everyone on board, to define a roadmap and to take action because everyone needs to take action uh, to save the planet. And another example, the last one I want to mention, and, and, and again, uh, the mayor of Warsaw mentioned, it is the mission for 100 climate neutral cities. I think it's, it's, it's important to see again in this change of um, state of actors in the EU uh, decision-making process that the cities and regions have been taking a lot of importance. Uh, two out of the five big EU missions, there is one on cancer, one on artificial intelligence, but there is one on adaptation to climate change that will support a number of pilot territories across Europe to be resilient to climate change. And there's the one on 100 climate neutral and smart cities. And those initiatives, again, are, I mean, this, this last one is giving a lot of importance to the engagement of the community into the transition. So again, this, we're passing from local authorities as managers of public services, public buildings, waste, uh, uh, transport, in some lucky cases, uh, also local energy companies, which is cle clearly a key to driving the transition, but that cannot happen in all member states, um, at least not in France, in, in most of the cities, but those are the key drivers. So we need to, we need to reinforce that by giving the power to the mayors, to the local administration, to run those services. We need, and I'm, I don't want to repeat, uh, to ensure that the funding is going there uh, and is not blocked by member states or, or allocated to other, other priorities. Because again, this is a, a systemic approach we need to have and local authorities are well placed to, uh, to do that. And again, we need, we need to, to inspire all the cities to to pass from the public services management to the really the, the orchestration of, of all the stakeholders into the transition. There are good examples, uh, Nantes with the Débat de la Transition uh, that were organized some years ago. We know about Leuven uh, in Belgium, who has this very innovative model of governance where the, the, the local administration, the city, and the municipal council is really giving power to an NGO to work collectively with the academia, the, the, the SMEs, the citizens to define and, and to implement a climate neutral roadmap. But again, when you, when you talk about all these elements, you see that what is really needed in the cities is more staff capacity. So not only the, the funding, but also the staff to develop the good projects, to implement them, and also those new competences, because um, this is a kind of social engineering that we need to develop in every city. And, and that, that's, for me, a way to um, also promote this campaign that several EU networks have been launching. And I will, I will put it on the, um, on the chat. It's a call for uh, bringing more staff um, 
into into the cities uh, for future proof cities for for the climate uh, we we estimate that it's about 2.5 additional staff per city per year in europe and well in in france we have 36000 uh, municipalities in europe i think we go up to 120 or 130000 so that's a huge amount of uh, civil servants that we will need to hire if we want to drive the transition. And th there's the, the fact of um, hiring them, and there's also the fact of making it attractive. It's because often young people will say, I don't want to become a civil servant. This is boring work anyway, they don't do anything. Um, no, th th there is a need for those new people new brains to join local authorities and help driving the transition. So that's a bit the scope of this campaign that we are launching with the support of different networks um, uh, across Europe. And a key element I think we need to pass to the Commission again to advocate about is that we need to go, we need to stop the, the usual funding of projects to go to the funding of, of the organization so that they can run the transition because if not we we up we deepening the gap between the happy few who can be members of some of our networks who or have the capacities to run life horizon europe projects but the rest cannot access that so we need again to reinforce the capacities maybe not in every local authority but there are regional energy agencies there are structures that can take over and provide the technical assistance to the smallest municipalities across Europe. But again, a key element is really building the capacities, ensuring the financing is there when we know that the cities have the competences to do the transition, and particularly on the energy sector. So that's, um, in a nutshell, not, not uh, elements that were only discussed in, in Nantes, but what the new context is bringing. Um, and I'm, I'm happy that we have mayors such as Rafael Trasovsky to bring it to the Commission. This is what they did uh, on the 18th of May when they met with uh, Timmermans and, and, and Commissioner Simpson. Uh, Follow-up meetings uh, are foreseen. So as you can see, Ronan, we, we're, trying to, we're trying to ensure that there is a dialogue between the EU and mayors. I think what is missing, and that was the goal of Nantes, that we partially succeeded into doing is to also have these dialogues between mayors and national level. And I have to, and, and allow me to confess one thing. When I was coming back from Nantes with my colleagues, we just, we just received an invitation to a, to a conference that was happening the following day in Paris, organized by Bruno Le Maire, where there were three or four ministers, four commissioners, all the CEO of the big companies, and unfortunately, not a single mayor. So again, I think we still have a lot to, to lobby about and to position mayors are key allies of the EU institutions in order to drive the transition. Because at the moment, it's still too much between big CEO and, and ministers, and we have difficulty to enter this, um, yeah, these discussion tables. So. Um, Sorry to conclude with this uh, <laughs> sad you. note, but but I, I can tell you that I had a, such a frustration when when in the train coming back from Nantes, saying Bruno Le Maire not even thinking about inviting uh, a mayor from a, from an EU city to to discuss that with the ministers. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Frederic. Um, yeah, I mean, many informations also you've shared and uh, the role of the local governments also to to organize all the initiatives, including citizens, is really interesting. And we will share also the information uh, to the participants and our website to these initiatives on how to reinforce the capacity of local governments, which is absolutely key. Uh, so we, we get a bit away from this only project approach, but also reinforcing the capacity at the local level, so we can get get the uh, the, the money also. Um, and about yeah, this last note, uh, we understand. I mean, it's uh, step by step. It's uh, there is an evolution. In not also we we had we were doing the climate change summit together with the 
climate conference of the Ministry of Environment within the French presidency of the EU Council. So it was already something, but yeah, we already we saw also that there was another ministry doing something uh, one day after without the involvement of, of local uh, of mayors. But step by step, and I think we have, if we put this, um, this agenda uh, every year, maybe we, we can, maybe we can have a, a better evolution in this sense. Completely agree with you. Um, thank you again, Frédéric. Um, now let's shift from energy sector maybe to another crucial sector, which is the, the building sector. And uh, Thomas Bros, who is the director of Climate Alliance, he's going to talk to us about this sector. Um, because we worked uh, in close collaboration with Climate Alliance on the um, on the also this event in Nantes, and especially the the activities related to the resilience adaptation of the of the building sector and how to accelerate the transition. Um, Mr. Thomas Bros, as a director of Climate Alliance, um, could you please report back on the proposals of the of the the building sector we we discussed in Nantes and what's your opinion on uh, to do these proposals about I mean what's your opinion on uh, the current situation in Europe for this uh, this sector thank you Thomas uh, <clears throat> thank you Roma and uh, thank you for uh, inviting me for for this uh, meeting. <clears throat> Um, yeah, well, it, it was mentioned already um, also for us and for me, the meeting in Nantes. Uh, and thank you, Ronin, for your work during the last years uh, of uh, bringing us together, civil society and uh, uh, the networks of uh, cities. I think this is a very valuable and important uh, work that you are doing with your team. So it, it was already mentioned, it was an important moment, uh, not only because it was one of the first conferences that uh, we were able to meet uh, physically after two years of uh, pandemic <clears throat> uh, and gave us the opportunity to meet uh, mayors, but also other uh, partners from different countries and uh, discuss directly the things. Uh, it was mentioned, it was just after some days when this, uh, the, the war and the Ukraine started and this gave uh, another message also to the conference showing the relevance and important, uh, importance of uh, being uh, energy independent and f uh, focusing on the renewable energies. Uh, and uh, trying to um, go away from fossil fuels. Um, and uh, uh, although, of course, the Ukraine is uh, close to us, and that's why it's uh, cl closer also to our uh, what, what we see in, in our daily uh, work and, and uh, also the, the news, I also want to highlight that uh, even before the war in Ukraine, thousands of people were dying daily and yearly because of uh, aggression, because of uh, the dependency on fossil fuels in many countries. So not only um, Russia is providing uh, fossil fuels and gas, but most of the countries are autocratic and no, not... Uh, um, democratic countries uh, which are oppressing and uh, making war in different areas of the world. So uh, this is important, I think, to understand that it's a strategic uh, and structural problem that we have this dependency and this relation of fossil fuels uh, is related to um, non-democratic and autocratic uh, systems, uh, which is a, a much bigger issue. And the war shows us that um, uh, the fossil dependency is not only a technical problem, but also a, a problem of uh, security, which brings us to another dimension of the analysis of the situation. And uh, we had many interesting and good discussions and participation in uh, Nantes. Uh, I think it was good uh, to have this moment. Uh, we as Climate Alliance, uh, our network is already 30 years old, so we have a lot of experience. The city where we 
which are working already for a lot of years uh, on uh, all these uh, topics. Uh, we try to bring this experience also into uh, conferences like the Climate Chance uh, Conference and especially um, uh, one of the workshops that uh, we uh, organized um, was about the role and the, uh, uh, the, the, the role of buildings and what can be done uh, on, on in this area. And our, um, our workshop was uh, divided, uh, therefore, in two parts. The, the, the first part was a more political discussion uh, with uh, mayors and representatives from uh, cities, from Nantes, uh, from Brest Mot Metropole, uh, also, the mayor of Grenoble was in our uh, workshop, uh, but also the mayor of the city of Cologne in Germany. Uh, so it was an interesting uh, exchange to learn uh, what is uh, going on in the cities, what are the experience and what are the political demands uh, coming out from, uh, from this um, experience and, and from this uh, level. And the second part, and, and this is, I think, important also to highlight, uh, was uh, to present some uh, good example, best practice examples, because the message here is, uh, and this is what we bring also in uh, all the conferences we participate, including the, the, the uh, international conference, uh, the COPs and so on, is that cities, are, um, uh, the, the cities are and municipalities, uh, smaller communities, they are, and regions are already active. They are doing a lot of things because they cannot wait for uh, the solutions coming from national or other uh, levels like the EU. Uh, so they are already active. They have experience. Frederick Boyer mentioned the experience of the city of including this, uh, the citizens. Uh, so there are a lot of experience and best practice here from which we can learn. So we, we need, don't need to start from scratch. Um, and this is, I think it's also an important message. So the, the main message from our, uh, from our meeting where that uh, local authorities are best positioned to tackle the upgrading uh, of buildings by retrofitting and renovating them to be more energy efficient uh, as they are also the closest to the citizens' everyday needs and uh, realities. This was already mentioned several times. Uh, Europe could offer further assistance concerning build buildings, not only through policy making, but also by providing further funds. So policy, uh, regulations and funding, uh, these are key elements that we need uh, to tackle and uh, focus on the, uh, the support of the cities in this uh, area. But as, as it was already mentioned, including involving citizens is also a key element. That's why information and collaboration is key to uh, be successful in all the activities. And not to forget that uh, so social justice and energy security, as I already mentioned, and climate justice must, justice, uh, must be also at the center of the activities and the building policies renovation policies are key to reducing energy poverty, energy consumption, and uh, greenhouse gas emissions. And that's why uh, this message are relevant when we see also what was mentioned by the mayor of um, Warsaw, the repower action uh, coming from the commission uh, to uh, counterbalance, let's say, or to, to find a, a plan to uh, and the dependency on Russian fossil fuel uh, imports, but in general on the fossil fuels, which is important. And here, uh, uh, the message proposed by, by the workshop are key also for, for this um, uh, uh, initiative, uh, because one of the key pillars of the repower plan is to reduce the fossil fuels um, faster in our homes and buildings. So that's why uh, we need to lower the barriers, uh, reduce energy demands, and, uh, uh, and that's why we welcome the uh, initiative. Uh, but uh, another uh, issue is uh, that uh, in the EU safe uh, communi um, communication, it is also highlighted that um, 
we we need to um, require the uh, improvement in the existing level of uh, resourcing by uh, providing advice and information as well as mechanisms of to enable more private investment so the involvement of the city citizens is key and uh, very important and that's uh, for example uh, one of uh, our um, campaigns and activities that was also presented during the workshop the energy caravan uh, uh, which uh, is a, a running uh, campaign in over 100 municipalities uh, mainly in in germany but also in other countries uh, that which boosts renovations far beyond the eu's renovation targets of two percent to rates of up to 15 percent so this is uh, a an, an very important um, campaign that is running and shows that um, and this is the maybe the final mes message um, the, the cities, they, they know how to do it uh, because they have the experiences. Um, the challenge is how to put this into practice. And here uh, I want to welcome uh, and say that the initiative of the climate chance to bring together and building a platform of communication uh, between um, um, uh, initiatives, uh, uh, cities uh, uh, with the commission with national level this is key we need more of these uh, platforms of exchange uh, mr traskowski has already mentioned the participation in the board meeting with the commission so all these platforms of exchange we need to improve to have more of them so thank you very much for your initiative thank you thank you thomas <clears throat> Um, so we are running a bit late, so uh, we'll, if we can accelerate a bit so we can finish by uh, 12.30. I'm now, now going to give the floor to Anne Bach, who is a Gender and Climate Policy Coordinator of Women Engaged for a Common Future. Uh, WCF has been a partner of Climate Change since uh, day one. So uh, Thomas already mentioned a bit like the just transition uh, aspects, so I would like to hear about Anne uh, on uh, this topic of the just transition for all, um, especially uh, including women. So what are you, your views on uh, how to ensure this just transition uh, for all citizens? Thank you, Anne. Thank you, Romain, and uh, good day to everybody. Um, thank you for inviting me to uh, give my feedback and, and views uh, following uh, the very successful uh, Climate Change Summit in Nantes. Um, I indeed had the, uh, the chance and, and the honor to moderate a roundtable on how we can make the EU Green Deal more gender responsive. Um, and um, I would like to start um, really by appreciating uh, the words from several of uh, former pan panelists that uh, the war that we are seeing today in the Ukraine is really fueled by our inability to um, accelerate the energy transition and, the, and our climate policies. So the, really the war in the Ukraine uh, and, and this terrible attack uh, from Russia shows us that uh, our climate action is a geopolitical issue and, and a very urgent one. And in order uh, to understand um, how to get everyone on board, um, we need to, to indeed bring in all citizens. Uh, and I'm happy to have heard that uh, also from uh, many of the panelists, uh, the mayor of uh, Varso, but uh, also just uh, uh, before um, me, um, um, uh, the leader from uh, the uh, Climate Alliance uh, and also Energy Cities. Um, and who are the citizens actually who can participate and who want to participate in this transition? Uh, well, they are very diverse and we need to uh, understand that the most vulnerable uh, of them uh, are uh, often women. Um, and the EU has a gender strategy because the EU has recognized that we still need to make a lot of progress uh, in reducing gender inequalities, uh, in actually fighting those inequalities and giving uh, 
women more chances, giving marginalized groups uh, much more chances to participate in the transition. But this EU gender strategy doesn't align, doesn't cross uh, with the with the Green Deal really um, in the um, daily in the daily um, politics. Renan Dantec has says has said really um, if we want to accelerate the transition, uh, we need to act on our daily lives, and cities are able to act on our daily lives. Actually, everybody can act uh, on daily lives. To do this in the proper way, I think the EU must take into consideration in a deeper sense um, the inequalities that exist and that prevent citizens from really participating in this, uh, in this transition. So I think the just transition can only be just uh, if it takes into consideration also uh, the gender dimension of it. And I will give just one example since we are talking a lot about energy transition today and the fact that so many very poor people are going to be impacted by the rise in energy prices, by the need uh, to uh, cut our consumptions on uh, fossil fuels dramatically, drastically, if we don't want to continue fueling this war led by Putin. Um, uh, I think we need to understand uh, that energy poverty impacts uh, mostly women uh, and that this side and this dimension, this gender dimension of energy poverty is not taken into account in policies, unfortunately. So in the roundtable that we had in Nantes, with the vice mayor of Budapest, Mrs. Katatuto, and also a representative of the uh, Legislative uh, Assembly of Umbria, Mrs. Donatella Pozzi, both uh, active members of the Committee of the Regions, we gave some uh, important uh, and detailed recommendations. Uh, and especially on uh, energy, uh, I think we need uh, across Europe to have a better defined definition of energy poverty. It is not aligned across all countries. And also this energy uh, definition, the, uh, the definition, sorry, of energy poverty is the first step for uh, efficient policies. And those policies must take into account uh, the fact that um, it needs to reduce the gender inequalities. So specific policies can be done to target uh, specific, uh, for example, uh, one parent households, because uh, single led households are main, mainly female households. Uh, there is no policy uh, today that targets uh, these kind of households. So just to give you a very concrete example, I cannot go over all of the policies and all of the sectors. But uh, since we have mayors here, uh, since we have also political representatives of the EU, uh, let me also give another example of a very general uh, measure and recommendation that we have made. It's gender budgeting. Some European cities like Vienna, uh, Lyon also, uh, are implementing gender budgeting. And that really um, helps in identifying the gaps that we still have in the EU to address the just transition. Uh, so I think that is also a recommendation that needs to be heard by uh, political decision makers and that we are pushing very, very strongly. Uh, and to finalize um, on some of the recommendations we have made, I cannot list all of them, uh, especially if uh, you're saying we're running a bit late. Um, I would like uh, to recall um, the recommendation uh, made by Mrs. Donatella Pozzi um, on the structural fund, fund the, sorry, the cohesion fund uh, of, uh, of the EU. Actually, uh, there are no social nor gender equality conditionalities in the structural and cohesion fund. And that could be also a measure that would help a lot uh, bring about a more just transition and ensure that uh, we have funding because uh, as you, many of, uh, of you said and Ronan first, we need much more fund to be well um, uh, targeted and, and well employed. And so 
for the funding to reach the citizens that want to act in the energy transition uh, and that are ready uh, for the transition that we want to make, uh, applying these social and gender equality conditionalities to the structural and cohesion fund would be a very good recommendation. We would have many more, like in the transport area, um, but I think for the sake of uh, the other panelists, uh, I, I will stop here. Uh, let me finalize by saying that I'm very happy to see that we have um, a, a large audience here uh, and that uh, we are very committed to continue uh, on pushing for those recommendations that have been presented by Climate Chance. Uh, they are a, a very great opportunity for the EU Green Deal to be properly implemented and to be bought in by the EU citizens. Without buying, uh, we are not going to be able to implement the Green Deal with all the very ambitious and uh, objective it has. Thank you. Thank you very much, Anne, for fitting exactly in the eight minutes which were allocated. Perfect. It gives us the possibility to give the floor to Francoise Bonnet, who has to leave at 12.15, um, exactly. So Francoise Bonnet is the Secretary General of ACR+. Plus. Um, the EU Green Deal uh, puts a big focus on circularity, a uh, theme which covers many sectors we have already mentioned today, uh, actually. Um, we have been working together for long, um, and, and thank you for that, Francoise. So how the EU can benefit from circular economy uh, approach and how maybe can cities uh, leverage uh, this topic? Thank you. Thank you very much, Romain, for giving me, giving me the floor and, and inviting me to, to also share with you the conclusion that we had uh, during the Nantes uh, conference. And I'm happy to be here again, because I think that we still have a lot of work to do in order to make understandable that uh, circular economy is also part of the solution uh, to fight climate change, because we have all indirect uh, emissions. And we discussed about the, the price of energy. We didn't say that with this Ukrainian crisis and uh, previous crisis, we have also a huge inflation. And so we really need also to have this soberness uh, driven for all manufactured product and of course our food also and where we can uh, promote circles and short circles as much as possible at local level I think that we can also give our part of uh, solution. So uh, during the conference at Nantes we had several conclusions and one was very important I think to address today also is to massify the systemic and holistic approach of the circular economy by implementing new indicators that go beyond the mandatory reporting expressed by uh, volumes and produced collected waste. We need to go beyond that. And this is what exactly we try to do uh, at ACR Plus with our more circularity, less carbon campaign. And I'm sure that also the, the European and agency now and other actors should uh, combine efforts to give really a, a clear message that circular economy is also part of, of the solution and that we really need uh, to have a more circular economy uh, to fight climate change. We need also to strengthen territorial strategies in favor of ecological transition by pushing uh, the creation of territorial hubs uh, or cluster on waste resource management to support industrial symbiosis, promote sustainable consumption and production behaviors. Again, I think that we can link with what Frederic said in the past, uh, in the, the previous intervention regarding uh, the, 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 the citizen's involvement uh, regarding energy consumption, but this is also true in our manufacturer pro uh, production and consumption, and, and of course, food production. And uh, regarding building also, we have, of course, the emergency performance of buildings, but we have also all the materials we, we use in, uh, in the buildings. And uh, we, we can try to also reduce the dependency that we have with some material that we do not find easily in uh, Europe. 
We also need to work on sovereignness to strengthen waste prevention, setting quantified prevention target for the reduction of residual waste. And we have the new uh, waste framework directive uh, coming in 24. I mean, not the new, but the modification. And for sure, it is something that we should uh, address in this uh, directive, together, of course, with all the legislation on products. And we also need to have a strategic circular supply chain for the high added value products needed for the transition and for critical materials, because without that, we won't be able to have this digital and ecological transition. So we certainly need also to incorporate rates of recycled materials in strategic sectors. What was also the conclusion of our debate during the conference is that we need the entire society to be circular without uh, forgetting a kind of soberness. And soberness doesn't mean that we do not have a well-being, but uh, we need to be careful in order to have a resilient, resilient sorry, Europe not only for energy, but also for other materials we need for our day-to-day -day life. Thank you. Thank you, Francoise, <clears throat> for raising this. May, maybe, maybe just another, another message, yeah, sorry, sure. that uh, emphasized also Frederick one regarding network and national level, etc. It's exactly the same with circular economy. Uh, we forget that where we consume is in cities and regions, and also that public authorities, local authorities at regional and municipal level, they do not have always the capacity to advocate uh, towards the European institutions, and this is the role of the network, but if we are only financed by Horizon 2020 project and other, not other uh, mean of finance, we want address a sustainable uh, message and, and work in the long term. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah, thank you for bringing up these topics of uh, circular economy of, and uh, the change of mindset it requires. It's really important uh, that we work more on these aspects. Um, so now uh, it's time to, to turn to the private sector uh, with uh, Martin Porter, who is Senior Strategic Advisor at CLG Europe. Um, so uh, CLG is the corporate leader, leaders group uh, at the uh, European level. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, we have heard today a lot um, today and during the summit of not uh, the, of, about the role of, of local actors as being at the heart of the just transition in, in Europe. Uh, from your own experience with the CLG and working with companies uh, across Europe, uh, how, how are businesses also taking uh, their part and the lead in the transition uh, and contributing to the acceleration of climate action at the local level? Thank you, Martin. Thank you, uh, Romain, and uh, merci beaucoup pour l'invitation aussi. C'est un plaisir d'être parmi vous, um, and I hope I can offer messages of support um, from the business community that we're working with that very much echo the points that have been made by almost all of the previous speakers. Um, I wasn't, unfortunately, in Nantes. It was my colleague, uh, Elliot, um, but I'm fully uh, appraised of everything that was discussed, and I hope I can share with you some uh, points in relation to, to what you've said, which uh, underline uh, the growing activity and ambition that the private sector has to support all of the things that we've been talking about today. And indeed, just mentioning uh, what Francoise uh, spoke about just now, the circular economy, as well as climate action going together, and indeed uh, the just transition, the social dimension of this being absolutely crucial. Um, let me just uh, say a couple of words about what um, CLG Europe is doing with other organizations and as part of the network um, of business and business related um, organizations that we're working with. Um, the group itself is, as you mentioned, a, a Brussels based uh, group of, uh, of companies that work in different sectors 
all of which are crucial for the, the climate transition. Uh, buildings, energy, agriculture and food, mobility, um, materials for, for industry. And all of these companies are committed to high levels of ambition and supporting uh, the transition that the mayor and many others have spoken about that is obviously more urgent than ever. Um, but not only talking about that ambition, but making sure there are action plans uh, to deliver that on the ground. Um, and that is where companies, uh, both large and small, have uh, their activities that connect to local uh, consumers, to uh, cities, to regions. Um, and there are many examples now, I'm pleased to say, where we can see that decisions taken um, at headquarters are having very much uh, impact locally. Um, those same companies also want to, to make sure that they're offering political support and advocating uh, with other organizations such as this one, um, and to do so with uh, organizations representing uh, regional authorities, uh, employees, consumers, and green NGOs. So we're working very much now in partnership uh, with others on this. And um, to that extent, I hope that although we represent uh, progressive companies and those at the leading edge uh, of this discussion, the movement that we are working with is growing very rapidly. And uh, we're part of both an international movement, the We Mean Business uh, coalition of uh, organizations and companies uh, that works to, to achieve this globally, but we also work uh, through Brussels at, at national and regional level with a network of uh, organizations, uh, business-led organizations seeking to achieve the same thing. And these are growing in um, uh, ambition and size uh, almost on a daily basis, I would say. What are we doing uh, to support the Green Deal and the just transition? I guess I would highlight a, a number of things here. Um, we have um, obviously at the heart of our um, activities, a desire to show how the case for climate action in particular is one that has a business logic to it. It's good for the economy, but because businesses obviously employ uh, a large number of people, they, they're the future of new employment and technologies and innovation. Uh, it is crucial that they also uh, demonstrate how they are addressing the just transition, how the jobs which are going to be affected uh, in uh, local communities, uh, some of which may be lost through this transition, can be replaced and will be replaced by high quality, um, high paying uh, employment in the same places sometimes uh, as often as possible as in those where the, the transition is, is having direct impacts. And the organizations, the companies that we're working with are, are, are investing in for example, uh, the mayor spoke about uh, changing all of the uh, the lights in Warsaw. Uh, there are many um, uh, of, of the members involved in buildings, uh, lighting, who are, who are directly investing in Warsaw, but elsewhere exactly to that end. Um, in addition to those activities, uh, the companies that, are, that we're working with are ensuring that with organizations such as this, uh, we're generating political support uh, writing letters with uh, organizations that um, represent uh, unions as well as uh, green NGOs to support the European Commission in the Green Deal generally, the Fit for 55 package that uh, we're all uh, aware of as well, but also the Repower EU program. And I think I would echo completely the points that others have made about the need to address um, all of the challenges that, that um, COVID uh, the economic crisis and Ukraine has thrown up with the same answers as we know are necessary for climate action. It's indispensable that we address these together uh, and we are determined to contribute to, to that effort and to support that politically at European but at local regional level uh, as well. Um, so to that extent, um, we're very supportive of the need for investment and I think the points that have been made about funding uh, at city level and a regional level, we're very supportive of. Uh, particularly in the context of the recovery uh, program and investment packages. Um, and we are arguing very much with the European Commission that they should be channeled to regional and local levels where the businesses that, that we work with are part of the delivery mechanism. And uh, we're keen to ensure that we collaborate 
locally as much as at European level uh, to do that. Um, so with that, I think um, I would simply uh, conclude by saying that those activities are ones which um, we are increasing um, uh, almost as I speak. Uh, we are getting new members. Uh, we have new initiatives which will uh, be rolling out obviously at European level, but also uh, are taking place now uh, at regional level. And we're working in Central and Eastern Europe, uh, in Southern Europe, uh, Northwestern Europe, in France obviously as well. Um, and we will keep collaborating with uh, not just the businesses that are part of our network, but also the organizations uh, on this course. So um, I hope that uh, gives you reassurance that the same messages that I hear from others, the private sector uh, is increasingly um, sharing and determined to play its part in uh, making this transition effective uh, and rapid and successful. Thank you. Thank you, Martin. Uh, for bringing this, uh, these messages. And yeah, it's really important to have uh, networks such as the local governments are may, may be more used to organize themselves in those networks and have this collaboration, but it's really, really valuable that uh, you, we can ho also have this kind of, of platform uh, for the business sector, uh, such as CLG Europe. And we are really happy that we can collaborate uh, and link you also with all these uh, uh, other uh, local actors we, we work with. So thank you again. Um, we, we were uh, supposed to have um, uh, one more speaker, Eero Alio, but he, sorry, had to leave earlier. Uh, he's, uh, he works for the DG Energy of the EU Commission, but Eero is uh, always involved also in following our activities. Um, so we can now move uh, move on to the conclusion uh, and uh, finish on time. I will ask to our secret secretary general Bernard Soulage to uh, wrap up the session. Uh, thank you, Bernard. The floor is yours. Thank you, uh, Romain. Uh, just before to uh, go to the conclusion, I would like to uh, say two or three words about mobility because we had two very interesting uh, panel in, uh, in uh, not uh, about mobility and it's a very important issue. So I will be very brief on that, but I just want to say three things about mobility we, we discussed in Nantes. The first one is, <clears throat> we think, and it was a large panel with people coming from NGOs, coming from the business, coming from cities, etc. And we, we were uh, very anxious about the fact that uh, too many people in EU focus only on electrical mobility and individual level. And uh, as uh, if the solution of all the problem on mobility was to, to uh, shift from, uh, from uh, diesel or, or, again, uh, or fuel to the electrical mobility. It's not a problem only. It's uh, one good way to, to improve, but it's not the, the, the main issue we have to discuss about. And we ask for two things. One is that EU um, uh, take a, large, a more a large place on mobility at a urban level. We know that uh, EU is very involved in the 10, in, in the big transport networks like uh, railways. That's a good thing. But at the urban level, up to now, the EU was not involved and it was very difficult for cities or regions to ask funding from EU, even in the structural fund or the cohesion fund on mobility. Our mobility is now in France or in Europe, the most important uh, part of the greenhouse gases. So it's uh, the second thing we ask. And we ask also to move to very, very, what we call slow mobility, soft mobility, and ask EU to uh, found also uh, some project on, on that issue. Like uh, uh, it was an idea we, we uh, asked for that, uh, you know that it's a 10 T's, what we call it, on TGV and very high speed uh, railways. But we ask also the same thing for bicycles from, uh, from, from that will make people uh, able to cross Europe with soft mobility. That's uh, the main, we had a, a lot of other things, but I just want, wanted to focus on that. 
on on the conclusion that I, I, I listened all the intervention and, and uh, I can say with maybe a smile, but it's not uh, a good smile, <laughs> if I can say. I heard that since 20 years. I was in the Committee of Region in the uh, early 20s. I was in the European Parliament, and I still have this uh, asking. We want cities and regions more involved in this process, and that EU could fund directly cities and um, regions and also civil society. It's not enough now. It, I think it's one of the big message we had in Nantes, we had this morning, make an effort. The Green Deal is a very good thing and the amount of money is very high, huge, but we need to have uh, some different channel to, to have this money on the ground where we need a real aid. That's the first thing I, I, I heard, it's not new, but we want to focus and, uh, and, and to, to say that again and hope that we will be uh, uh, listening more, more, more and more during the next years. The second thing I, I, I think I, I, it was said by uh, Francois, I think, that uh, about capacity building. We, when we speak about Africa, about Asia, about everything, we, everybody speak about capacity building. We can't we can't uh, um, uh, hope that uh, we will improve without capacity building. But this not so many said about Europe. Or oh, that was an important issue. You want to make uh, uh, focus on this issue, but are you sure that at the, at the ground level that, uh, that there are the capacity building where the public servant, and I think that's a good message we can, we can uh, transfer. Uh, don't give money if it's not the capacity on the, for, for the public servant or, or, or in cities, in, in, uh, in civil society, in region to, to, uh, to implement it. The third thing, is uh, the, uh, about the, uh, the uh, cohesion fund and the structural fund. And it's when, when we, when I, I can say that, I, I was discussing with uh, Brussels about uh, in my region, we had a lot of money in, in a big region like uh, uh, the, the second region of France. And, uh, and when we are discussing, okay, okay, we, you have to put 30% on the green issues. But when we discuss about real, uh, real uh, project, it was very difficult to have uh, in, to involve all the people and to have a res good response in Brussels uh, on this uh, thing that uh, Anne uh, focused on it. We know we know that if you we haven't the civil society on board, all the Little project on on housing, on um, waste, on mobility will have no success. It will be uh, just money that you spread on, but without any not 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 any, but with uh, too too uh, little effect. So that's the, the the third thing, and the the last one, and uh, I think that's the reason why. With uh, Renan, uh, since now seven years, we, we, we fight to have climate change, to have climate change summit, to have climate change uh, uh, network. And we, we saw that this morning. One of the key problems is that everybody work together, NGOs, civil society, business, cities and region. It's not only, if each on its own track, but trying to have all these people working together. And that was asking uh, by uh, Anne and by others. We have this uh, message for the EU, and I know it could, could be heard in, in, in Brussels. It's a very good thing that we have the Green Deal, but make, make sure that all the stakeholders are on board and discussing and involved in that. I think that the, the, the non-summit and the link we have with, uh, you, you said that just right now, uh, Romain, with the uh, DGs in, uh, in, in Brussels, 
um, showing that it's improving on that uh, on that necessity to to work all together. But it's step by step, and I think that not could uh, be a good step. And the next uh, steps we have to 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 do together is uh, maybe another summit next year. I want just to. Um, to say that we were very happy to have you today, to have you with us in Nantes, and uh, we uh, will add a lot of uh, new opportunities that in uh, during the next months and obviously in, in uh, the COP27, but also we hope in a new uh, in a new summit. And I heard that my president, my dear president Ronan, is still working on that. And what he said to Verso was uh, <laughs> maybe a proposal for 2023 20, 20, uh, <laughs> in, uh, in Poland and with peace, peace in the Eastern of, uh, the, uh, of Europe. So have a good time. And I let the conclusion to Roman Ronan, but we were very happy to have you with us this morning. Thank you. Thank you, Bernard. Yeah, Ronan, you wanted to add something to close the... No, no, no. Uh, I think the conclusion of Bernard was absolutely complete. Uh, no, it's very important to, to put on the table a precise proposal, precise proposal about access to finance, uh, about a new uh, finance mechanism. And um, I, I'm very happy to have the, this uh, exchange and uh, our responsibility after not. Uh, I think too that it was a success, is to put on the table some very concrete proposal. And we are working about that to have this address to European Commission and a, a national uh, minister and a government too, because it is, we know, uh, we, we need this, uh, this deal between the commission, the national government and the European parliament. And we have to, to advocacy with the result of not. Yeah, thank you. So stay tuned. We will be publishing the, the proposal, the paper with some proposals and a summary in the coming days. Thank you, everyone, for staying with us. And uh, it's time to finish with three little minutes delay. Uh, see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you bye -bye. very much. Goodbye. Bye. -bye. bye.